what do you think is the greatest relationship you can have? What is the greater? Is it the relationship with Allah, with your parents, with your spouse? What is the greatest relationship you think that you can have? And the reason I ask that question is because uh, one of the greatest philosophers in the world says, Aristotle said that knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. So what does it actually mean to know yourself? Because when we talk about relationship, I'll share a short story. Um, a few months back on Instagram, I put it up. I said, what is the greatest relationship you can have with yourself? And I gave four options. I said, relationship with Allah, your creator, your spouse, yourself, your parents. So many people said relationship with Allah. So many people. But what I want to... I want, us to, I want to encourage us to look at it from another lens. As Muslims, we all know that we're here to worship Allah. That's our primary responsibility. But sometimes for me, my own journey in 2015, I began to know my creator more when I began to know myself. Because I started to ask myself certain questions. Why am I here? What's my purpose? Why am I Muslim? How can I be a better Muslim? That relationship was inward. It started from Lola Yunus trying to figure out what is it that I'm about to contribute to this world. And it was that journey that led me to, oh, this is how we can be better Muslim. This is how this, because sometimes as, when we grow up as Muslims, we take a pray fast. We take these things sometimes just that because they said I should do it. But for me, in my own experience, it was that journey of self-awareness, that journey of getting to build a relationship with myself that made me to realize that there isn't really a better way that works for me for me to nurture a relationship with Allah. And so knowing yourself is the beginning of all relationship, uh, is the beginning of all wisdom, according to Aristotle. Some of us may agree, some of us may not agree, but that was how I found myself first, and then I found my creator. That is how it worked for me. So let's move on. The question then is, how exactly do you begin to know yourself? We've all heard, know yourself is the beginning of all we've done. I want self-discovery, self-awareness. But what, what exactly is the practical steps? And that's what we're about to go into now. What are the practical steps that can help us to begin to know, to help you to begin to know yourself? There are many ways to do that, but for the purpose of the time that we have, I'm going to stick to four ways. Number one way is to become aware of yourself. To know yourself is to be aware of yourself. But a lot of people, don't, they just say, do yourself, discover yourself. What are the practical steps to doing that? One, and we'll look at it from four ways today, values, passion, fear, and vision. Values vision, passion, and, and fear. There are many ways, but for the purpose of today, let's just stick to those four things. Is there any, way, any other way you think that we can, you can know yourself? I want us to use the chat box, please. How else do you think you can start to know yourself? Rukaya, I love what you said. The greatest relationship is with Allah and myself. Thank you for sharing that. How do you think you can begin to nurture a relationship with yourself? What are some of the things you think you can do to begin to nurture a relationship with yourself? If anybody feel, wants to share, please use the chat box and let us, um, let us share. So I've said to us that self-awareness is one of the first steps to knowing ourselves because you can't how can you know yourself if you are not aware of yourself? If somebody should give you a gift saying, oh, I'm going to this, you're traveling to, from Abuja to Lagos and say, take this box and help me give to someone in Abuja. I'm sure you ask the person, what is in the box? What am I taking? What, what do you want me to accept? I'm going to be traveling. What is it that you want me to give? It's the same way when someone says, know yourself. What is the self that you want to know? There are three selves. There is a self that is your authentic self. The you in I think in Islam we call that the future state. That's pureness. Especially we see this in children. 
children are not afraid. You see a child trying to learn how to walk. The child is not wondering if I fall down, they will laugh at me. No, the, chi- the child is just trying to walk. That is our authentic self. And then there's the other self that usually we use the language ego for. What exactly is your ego? Your ego is that perception that you think the world should have of you. That perception you think the world should have of you. And that comes from layers of conditioning. But without going into that, a lot of, some of us, maybe we're at the age where we want to get married. In our heart of hearts, we know the person, maybe I would rather marry this person. Well, you're afraid of what will mommy say? What will people say? How can I be someone that works at Google as a product owner? And I want to marry a guy that went to, that doesn't even have a degree, something like that. So you have that ego, that perception that I'm a successful person. Therefore, I need to marry somebody that is equally successful. It doesn't really mean that authentically that is what is true for you. So when you're talking about self-awareness, when you're talking about building a relationship with yourself and even with others, the first step is you have to know that you're building that relationship with that authentic self, not your ego, not what people think of you, not what your environment, your peer group, social media expects of you but what you as an individual expect of yourself. So I want to read, uh, B. Ali says, one of the ways to know yourself is by introspection. Absolutely, that is so powerful. Rupaya says, loving who you are, identifying your strengths and your weaknesses. Super, and we're going to get to that. So let's go to the definition of self-awareness. There was, there's so many definitions, but I love this one that I've taken from different things I've read. It sort of captures my opinion, my view of self-awareness. And what does it say here? Self-awareness at its core represents how clearly you know and understand yourself, how well you understand your values, passions, aspirations, vision, more importantly, worries and fears. Your worries and your fears and how you fit into the environment around you. And then it goes on to talk about your thoughts feelings, behavior, strengths, and weaknesses, and of course, the impact you have on others. That is an all-encompassing definition that we would not go into everything today, but the four things I want us to talk about will be vision, values, passion, and fears. And also, slightly, I'm going to talk, talk on fit with your environment. I know right now in Nigeria, as a career coach, I know So many people are thinking of moving out of Nigeria, moving out of Nigeria. I'm not about to talk about relocation now. But what I'm trying to say in this definition of self-awareness, when it says fit your environment, some of you have certain talents and potential. Maybe you're a tech person. Maybe you're a creative person. Maybe you have your your writer. But you might find yourself to be in an environment. In this case, it could be the country you live in. It could be the job you have. It could be the external forces surrounding the environment you live in that does not allow that passion and talent you have to thrive. And that is what this definition is saying, that being able to recognize the fact that actually as a creative person, as a tech person, this current environment, be it your situation at home, your work, your country, this external environment that I have, does not allow me to optimize, to maximize this potential. Therefore, I need to remove myself from this environment to another environment so I can thrive. It's the same with marriage. Why you see marriages end? Oftentimes, it's because that person has become aware enough of themselves that, you know what, I cannot thrive in a relationship like this. It doesn't mean the, the person you're leaving is good or bad. It's just mean that person is aware. That's what's the power of self-awareness. That person is aware enough, regardless of what people may think. Ah, she too, she's traveling out. Oh, she too, she's doing this, she's doing that. But they are aware enough that not about what other people think, but what I want internally, my authentic self. Therefore, I need to remove myself to go somewhere else that I can thrive. That is what self-awareness involves. 